All right, boys and girls, here we are again. This is Jason with Jadron Aquatics. We are moving into part two of the unboxing from Texas Aquatics. On a side note, I'm going to try to keep mentioning this all the time. Don't forget to get your tickets to Aquashella. I know you guys are thinking, are you making money off this? No, Jason is not making a penny off this. I just want to see you guys in person and get to meet each and every one of you. So I want to keep telling you so that you get your tickets and come to Aquashella in Dallas on March 30 something or another. You would think, yeah, Jason, if you really want us to come, you might want to look the date up. Well, just search Aquashella and you can find it. It's like the last weekend in March. As excited I am about it, you think I would know the exact day. So let's move on ahead and head back out to Texas Aquatics. I want you guys to know how dedicated I am to you. So today, earlier today, I had to have a root canal done and then an hour and a half, let's see, my root canal was at 3.30 and at 5.30 I was on the way to his store to film this unboxing for you. Yes, a root canal. That is how much I love you guys and how dedicated I am to getting you this footage. I mean, he got a bunch of boxes in the day, like 12 or 13 or something, and I did not want you guys to miss out. This is the love that I have for each one of you. Yes, you. Yeah, even you and you. You too. I love you guys. These are the peacock bass, the Kelbari peacock bass. These are the ones that don't get quite as large as the regular peacock bass. I mean, they still get a foot long. They get a little bit more yellow to them but they don't get quite as big, they don't get the two or three feet long, so they're not, you can put them in a regular size tank, you know, a 100 gallon tank instead of a 500 gallon tank. That's another fish that originated in, they, they think they were in the uh, waterways where they had a lot more debris and there are a lot more plants and stuff in those so the, the big fish didn't have the advantage so the smaller fish were what uh, predominated. Um, that's, another, that's another fish where there used to be a lot of lumping going on. No matter where you cut the fish, you throw it all the same, in the same vat and let them all go together and they, they, they poof, that was it. That's what happened with angel fish, that's what happened with discus. Now they're trying to figure out that, hey, these actually are a species from a separate locale and they actually do better when you don't just sit there and lump them all together. These are the pea puffers out of India. These are the ones that uh, they're starting to breed in Singapore. These are a totally freshwater puffer. And they're much milder than the, than the normal puffers you see. They're more of a community fish. Parrot cichlids. These are the uh, goofy looking fish that have the, the messed up mouth. Um, the reason behind these guys is they're almost indestructible and they don't have the physical tools to wreak havoc through your tank. So they go with suspend anything and they don't get super big. But they are a man-made fish depending on who you talk to, how they're made, but they are definitely a, a, a fish that somebody has done some work with. So a hybrid? Probably not. Okay. Um, hybrids don't have these characteristics. Hybrids just look funky or have extra color or extra head growth or flower horns are hybrids. They're like regular fish. To funkify a fish like this, you almost gotta do something else to it. You stunt their growth, don't, put them, don't let them grow up properly. Put them in a 10 gallon tank for a couple years and they start getting stunted. Um, from what I've talked to though, you put enough heavy metals on them, you get these guys. I like think you put zinc on them in high quantities, you get the, the balloon, the paratized fish, the uh, balloon body fit, balloon body mollies, uh, the, the parrot, the, the parrot cichlids, the uh, like angel rams. Fancy goldfish-esque type stuff? Yeah, but the goldfish are normally that way. Oh. The goldfish are just, goldfish was through line breeding, you take the ones that are kind of short and dumpy and over many, I don't know how many hundreds of years, they, that's how you get the goldfish. But the goldfish aren't. Goldfish is through a lot of calling out and only keeping select ones. These guys are something a different process. Mm. 
these guys developed overnight in the mid 90s, mid early to mid 90s, and they said that they were a hybrid, but hybrids don't don't develop these characteristics. Of course, they're still frowned on in most of the sinking places for whatever reason. They said they're hybrid, so, they, so some of the sinking people won't let them in their shows or in their in their uh, auctions because, oh, it's a hybrid. Probably not a hybrid, but, you know. There's some frontosis. There's another fish out of Tanganyika, Lake Tanganyika in Africa, that are being bred in Taiwan. Taiwan's doing a lot of the high-end cichlids. Um, they really put a lot of time and effort into it. Uh, Taiwan is, is the next best thing to uh, the people in Florida as far as raising some of the high-end uh, Tanganyikas. Are those the same seven line as you got in the other day? Well, no, these are six drops. These are probably Burundi's, okay. but they don't tell you that they're Burundi's. They won't give you a location name on them. Um, they're not quite as up to it as far as keeping track of where they're from, but they, they are, are breeding the high-end stuff that just aren't exactly telling you exactly which one they are. So it's still a little bit hit and miss. You gotta be a little bit careful with them. But the, the seven travels are from Kagoma. These are probably from Burundi. Burundi's are probably the most common ones out there as far as frontosis go. Mm -hmm. Males and females will get a nuchal hump. But it's uh, the males will definitely get the bigger one, and sometimes you see the nuchal up on the male sticks considerably out in front of the body. Um, but it just takes a long time to develop that big nuchal hump. That's what everybody's wanting. That's why people do the flower horns too, is to get that big nuchal hump. Um, Frontosis get it nat more naturally. They're not even the ones in the wild will have the big nuchal, and they're not a. Mm -hmm. uh, They know how to cope with their nuchal hump better than some fish. Like big goldfish or even big flower horns with a big golf ball stuck to their head. They don't, they can't figure out how to, how to deal with it. They, they still think they're a little bitty fish and they get in the corner and stuff and mess themselves up. Whereas frontosis don't ever do that. And I don't know, it probably has to do with they've had the, the nuchal hump a lot longer. They've been working with it a lot longer. By a lot longer, I'm probably thinking of thousands or even millions of years that they, they've had it. It's not something that, that somebody sprung on them all at once and, uh, and they can't figure out how to deal with it. Coolie loaches. These are the strap coolie loaches. These are another really cool fish out of Southeast Asia. Sometimes these guys have issues. They go to, they get the, the whirlies and don't do so well, but they, they've done a little bit better on them. And I don't know why they get the whirlies, but sometimes they do. And it's kind of one of the things you gotta watch out for. What's the whirlies? Or they to their whirly, 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 and just continue to whirl around until they die. Oh. And but see, these guys are acting right, but sometimes when you get them in, they are they're all doing the whirlies, and it's like Bobcock Cardinals. They just don't do well. Traffic coolies is one to get the have the problem with. Uh, not doing well. The regular, the uh, ones that are solid color, the reds or the black, blacks or the browns, those all do fine. But for some reason, the uh, striped ones aren't near as durable. These are some more snails. These are the orange rabbit snails. They have the orange flesh. They look like a super large Malaysian cone snail, but they have, but they have a, they're, they're much bigger and they're orange, and they're real cool to watch. These are the red peacocks, another fish out of, these are actually out of Thailand. Um, these are the uh, aligned red peacock. You take a sunshine peacock and you breed the ones that have the most orange, orangish reddish to them and you keep on selecting, selecting them out and that's how you get the red peacocks. Um, they're not a hybrid, they're not a, a uh, mutant or anything like that. There's people, what somebody's developed by just line breeding the, the most colorful ones, the ones that they want the best. And a lot of people are starting to, are, have been doing this. Of course, this has been out for 
10 or 15 years or probably more than that but that's what this is more of a lion bred fish so this is still accepted for by most of the sickle people but even even by most of the high-end sickle people as a as a real fish it's not a hybrid or anything But remind me again, the OBs are considered to be hybrids? OBs are hybrids. OBs are cross between a, some sort of peacock, whether it's a, a red peacock or a sunshine peacock or a yellow, and an OB zebra. Mm. So that's how they get the, the OBs in peacocks. There are no naturally occurring OB zebras. Sorry, there are no naturally occurring OB peacocks. There are all sorts of naturally occurring OB zebras throughout the lake. But the OB peacock is a hybrid. Mm -hmm. and. It's not just OB peacocks that are hybrids, it's all the dragon bloods and the all those guys are a, a hybrid to get that uh, that funky reddish orangish color in the kind of a gold colored body. Some more rams, these are the electric blue rams. More individually bagged. It takes that much longer to get them open. Wow. And these guys will actually get real colorful. They have like like a golden head to them as they get bigger. But still, it's a, I don't see why you bag them individually. These are some of the yellow labs. Another, uh, another one of the uh, fish out of Lake Malawi. This one they, they found by accident um, about 100, at least 100 feet down in the lake. Bright, bright yellow. Uh, it's one of them. They were hard to find to start with. They were very expensive when they first came out. But they, just like, but just like anything else, at Lake Malawi it breeds very, very easily, and sometimes they just get overrun with them. These are that another fish out of Lake Malawi. This is the Hap Hapagomus mora, the blue dolphin. These are the ones, small ones right now. The blue dolphin is another one that gets a big nuchal hump, but not near as big as a uh, frontosa. These are the Hapalis, the Sangarcomus fire eye. They're ones that turn solid jet, bl solid blue, bril brilliant blue. Some of them have the white top fin. The white, white top fins are with the the ice cap or iceberg Hapalis. The Ollies are one of the more common fish out of Lake Malawi, and they're really cool fish, but you don't realize how uncommon they are in the lake. They're a predator, and normally predator-prey to ratio is really low. You normally have a lot more predators or prey species, so somebody's had to work a long time to find enough to actually breed those. But once you get them going, they breed very easily. Some of the bigger yellow labs. Are those all males? No, will be uh, all these are all males. These will be males and females. Okay. But the males will have more black on them. But these will have both males and females in here. Okay. I got two of those. This is a Christmas tree moss stuff that that has more of a spiky look to it. Then we got some uh, bigger Anubias. Some of the bigger Java ferns. And we got all sorts of cryptocorns. Cryptocorns, these are more of a foreground plant. These are in little pots, but they grow so well that people have been dying to have loads, so I got extra cryptocorns this time. And we got some bigger potted uh, Anubias. And bigger, we've okay, got two different types of Anubias. I'm sorry, two different types of java fern potted. As well as the, uh, these are Anubis in here too. Alright guys, 
guys. Hope you enjoyed that unboxing again. I can't tell you how much fun I'm having doing this. I hope you guys are really enjoying this. It's absolutely astonishing to me the amount of fish this man gets in. I never had any idea how much fish he was going through. But he's getting two to three shipments every single week, and almost everyone that comes in is about this size. I mean, it is thousands upon thousands of fish. So, man, it is just like Christmas. And it's so cool that even though he's been doing this for this long, that he still gets in so much enjoyment from it. And the funny thing is, the last box he opened was plants, and he goes, oh, it's plants. <laughs> so, he's got no excitement for the plants, but he still gets excited about opening these fish. So be sure to leave a comment down below if you got any questions, comments, or you just want to put something down there. Just just tap away. Just smack on that <laughs> smack on that keyboard and maybe hey, how about give me a like? Hey, that's something I never asked for. Why don't you click the like button if you like this? If you didn't like this, click the thumbs down because Lord knows I get a, at least two or three thumbs down every video. There's obviously one of you guys out there, two, possibly three of you guys that just don't like me and give me a thumbs down every time. But you know what? I don't mind because that means that you had to click on the video so I got a view out of it. So I appreciate that. So thanks again guys and God bless.